Major funding for A Taste of Louisiana with John Fultz and Company is made possible in part by Zatarain's authentic New Orleans style dinner mixes. Zatarain's, a good way to jazz up dinner and a real New Orleans original since 1889. Louisiana, she's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and leave different. Additional funding is provided by the Friends of Louisiana Public Broadcasting and the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. James McCook and his wife Annabelle moved from the country town of Robilene to the city of Natchitoches in 1903 to enable their children to receive a better education. Natchitoches was the perfect spot because Normal College was here, but also the McCook brothers operated the general store and were partners in the local lumber company. They chose the Queen Anne Victorian style of architecture, which included such features as gorgeous bay windows, high-pitched roofs, dominant gable, and a cool wraparound front porch. This beautiful painted lady often changed hands over the years, but became the first B&B &B in Natchitoches in 1983. I'm Chef John Falls. Welcome to a home named after France's royal emblem. Welcome to Fleur de Lis. Traditionally Victorian homes flaunt shades of mauve, burgundy, rich blues, and oyster shell. True to the style is this magnificent B&B. Guests enter the home and are immediately pampered in early 1900s charm. The fretwork displayed above each doorway enhances the wonderful accessories that Tom and Harriet Palmer have chosen to decorate their home. Just take a look at this furniture. This little turtle top table and elegant armoire are only overshadowed by the beauty of this walnut ship captain's desk from the 1800s. Harriet loves collecting Victorian lamps and display many of her prizes throughout the home. These designs are from the Lamp Lady in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Breakfast is served daily on this gorgeous 12-foot Louisiana cypress table. The American sideboard contains hand-rolled glass from Germany. What a sight to behold, y'all, while strolling through the dining room. These pieces are just priceless. The Stephen and McCook Lumber Company obviously hand-picked the woodwork displayed throughout the home. What workmanship is evident of those early craftsmen here in the staircase? I don't think I've ever seen a pretty one. Fleur de Lis boasts five guest rooms, all with period appointments. Here, a French bed, king size no less, is further decorated with a handmade quilt a gift to Harriet on her eighth anniversary. And y'all, take a look at this gorgeous little serpentine oak dresser with mirror. 1865 chestnut period furniture are highlighted in this beautiful bedroom. The Ford poster bed was designed by George Oliver in this room and is located in the honeymoon suite. It even has its own little sitting room. Wow. 
Ah, Fleur-de-lis, France's royal emblem, like its namesake, is known for beauty and hospitality. Ah, Fleur-de-lis, built around 1900, y'all, and whenever I see one of these painted ladies, as they're called, one of these great Victorian mansions, I kind of think of what a little dollhouse would look like if uh, uh, somebody walked up with a magic wand and just hit it and made it grow into a home that you could just walk into. That's exactly what these Victorian homes look. And the woodwork, the stained glass, uh, the craftsmen of those days uh, just... I, I don't think we could ever find anything like that again. If we did, we surely couldn't afford it. A beautiful home, y'all, in one of the oldest settlements of Louisiana, the Natchitoches uh, area. You have to go and visit it. And the foods in that area are really reflective of a lot of different cultures as well. Creole meaning the mixtures, the melange of all of these different cultures, the Italians, the French, the Spanish, of course, very uh, uh, heavy in that uh, Creole influence. So let's talk a little bit about the dishes that you would find in that area. The first dish that I want to cook for you today is going to be a, uh, a pasta dish that brings in a lot of the flavors of Louisiana. And then I'm going to do a spinach dish for you. And both of those are just really, really fantastic dishes served at Fleur de Lis. So take a look at my platter here. Isn't this gorgeous? Not, not only the platter is gorgeous, look at all of the stuff on it. This is the ingredients for my pasta laia, as I'm calling it. Fleur de Lis pasta laia. Not jambalaya, but pasta laia. We have here the spicy andouille sausage, and this pasta laia is going to be made with seafood. So you see we have uh, claw crab meat right here and jumbo lump crab meat uh, uh, here. Crawfish naturally from the bayou. Shrimp. Uh, a lot of different types of mussels, too. We have the, uh, the green lips, the black mussels. Here's those little green lips right here from New Zealand. And then the black mussels, or the blue mussels, as some people call them. Crawfish right here in, its, uh, uh, in the meat. And then, of course, tomatoes and all the great spices, basil and thyme. All of this going into one pot, y'all, to create a dish called pastalaya, unlike jambalaya, which is made with rice. This is made with? Pasta, <laughs> exactly. So we're going to begin with a little bit olive oil into my cast iron pot. And of course, extra virgin olive oil. Uh, Y'all, the first press of, um, of the olive oil, which is going uh, to be the richest, the greenest, the most flavorful of all of the olive oils. So once uh, I put that olive oil into my pot, now I'm going to saute my onion, celery, bell pepper, because jambalaya is actually a dish in Louisiana made with seafoods or meats or combinations of the two, all simmered in onion, celery, bell pepper, garlic, flavored with a stock, and then raw rice put into it. We're going to do the same thing, except we're going to serve pasta into this dish in honor of the Italian influence in Creole cooking. Now, some bell pepper, a lot of good bell pepper. I'm going to put some red and yellow bell pepper in here, too, because I like all of the colors. Now, no big flavor differences, of course, in those bell peppers, so just pretty color. And now, y'all, Italian, Spanish, French, garlic, and a lot of it. So go ahead and throw that down in there. And then I'm going to saute my andouille sausage, which is a, uh, a really nice, spicy, flavorful meat of Louisiana. It's one of our seasoning meats. But of course, feel free to put ham in the place of the uh, 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 andouille, or you could put any of your own local sausages as well. Look at that nice, smoky andouille sausage, and it's going to flavor that pasta with a nice, uh, smoky flavor. Now, y'all, into this, just a little touch of flour. We're going to put a little touch of flour in here because we're going to thicken the uh, stock just a fraction, but not much because, remember, the pasta is starch. In fact, the word pasta is Italian for, uh, for dough or paste, so you certainly don't want to get it more pasty than, uh, uh, than the pasta itself. So blend that around a little bit, and then into this pot, y'all, the shellfish stock. I made a really nice, rich shellfish stock with crab and shrimp and crawfish, all the flavors that's in the pasta. So take a look at my little stock pot here. I'm going to go down into it and grab about a quart of that nice stock out of here. And you can imagine how flavorful this uh, dish is going to be uh, with the nice uh, shellfish stock. And you've heard the old saying many times, the nearer the bone, the sweeter the meat. And that's exactly right. That's where that saying comes from, the fact that uh, the, the, the water from the seafoods or, or the meats that's been slowly simmered in that water with aromatic vegetables 
give a stock a much, much heartier flavor than even the meat itself. So the nearer the bone, the sweeter the meat, y'all. Now the stock is in, so I'm going to go ahead at this point and add some of my uh, other ingredients. I'm going to put some fresh tomatoes into it. I'm going to add a little bit basil, thyme, oregano. This is Italian. Just go ahead and throw it in there as much as you'd like. And then I'm going to throw my crawfish in. And of course, this is going to cook fast, y'all. This is going to cook, cook really fast. So I'm going to put my crawfish, my claw crab meat. Oh, I wish you were here to enjoy this dish. A couple of crawfish, throw them in there. Uh, mussels, not only the black mussels, but the New Zealand green lips as well. Can you imagine what this dish is going to taste like? Just look at the ingredients going into it. Blend that around quickly and then the uh, other seasoning, salt, pepper. Use all of your uh, own flavors. I'm going to add a little Creole seasoning. This is a Creole dish. A little spice, a little pepper. You can add some hot sauce to it if you want to. Just kind of blend that in like that. And once that's mixed in and the water or stock comes back to a good rolling boil, add a little touch of chopped parsley and then y'all the pasta. And look at the two different color pastas I'm going to put into the pot. I'm putting in the beet penne. And by the way, penne uh, is um, Italian for pen or quill because it has that nice little point to it. And about 12 ounces, about three quarters of a pound of that penne pasta will go right into the uh, quart and a half of stock, blend that around. Is this gorgeous or what, y'all? Just take a look in this pot. This is absolutely beautiful. And then you put a lid on top of it. Let the pasta cook and absorb all of that wonderful flavor. It's going to be just magnificent. You want to uh, turn the fire to low. Put a cover on top of that pot, just as you would if you're cooking rice. Let it cook for about 35 to 45 minutes. And y'all, Take a look at what it looks like when it's done right here on that. Look, oh, can you imagine? And look at the platter that it's served in. Eggplant all the way around the edges. A beautiful dish, y'all. Pasta laia from that wonderful home called Fleur de Lis, uh, all the way in Natchitoches, Louisiana. Now, my second dish I want to do for you. This is another really, really interesting dish. Dish. This is a spinach mold, a spinach and shrimp mold. And I have a lot of interesting ingredients going into it. First, I'm going to whip up about four uh, egg yolks, and I kept the uh, uh, egg whites. I've whipped them separately. And uh, this is not only a good side dish vegetable, I can imagine this being a great vegetarian dish. You can uh, leave out the shrimp if you don't want seafood, but it's uh, really a nice, uh, nice dish. I'm adding cheddar cheese, about a cup of cheddar cheese, because this kind of helps hold it all together. Uh, the cheese melts in the spinach mold, so I'm going to blend that around. And then you want to throw in onion, celery, bell pepper again, because this is going to be baked for about 40 minutes. So go ahead and put in your onions. They're going to cook. You can saute these too, y'all, if you'd like. But uh, really, no need to, because there's a lot of liquid uh, in the spinach, and it's going to cook all of these vegetables. You don't have to worry about that. A little garlic, onion, celery, bell pepper, garlic. Again, the trinity in Louisiana cooking. Now, shrimp. And I'm putting in about a, well, I guess this is about a 50, 60 count peel and devein shrimp. And of course, you can leave the uh, uh, shrimp out if you want to leave all meat and seafood out of the dish. Just kind of mash that cheese around with the eggs. And then I've taken the spinach. And I want you to look at my spinach here right next to the bowl because this is frozen spinach that I've just taken out of the package and squeezed all of the water out. And you want to get every bit of water out of this because the eggs and the cheese need to hold all of this together when the, uh, when the mold is baking. If you don't squeeze all the water out, you're going to have a slush on your hands, y'all. It's really going to be a mess here. And spinach is one of those great, great uh, spring and winter vegetables. The spring, I think, is a little bit uh, better. The young leaves of the spinach in spring I really like a lot. Uh, the fall vegetables, uh, uh, fall spinach is good as well. This spinach, by the way, came to uh, France, first of all, from uh, with Catherine de Medici from Florence when she came over to marry the king of France. So any dish using, uh, uh, using spinach is called Florentine. And now I'm going to put in a little touch of lemon juice, just a little touch to put some acidity in it. And then 
some egg whites, y'all. Just uh, whipped egg whites. The egg whites that are left over from the egg yolk, just kind of whip them and put them down in here. And this is going to kind of cause a souffleing effect. So you can see how all of this is coming together nicely here. Just blend it. Now you see where the liquid is coming from? Imagine if you didn't squeeze all of this out of here. Boy, what a healthy vegetable too, y'all. Beta carotene, rich in beta carotene. And when you talk about a, a dish that is great uh, in, in fighting all different kinds of disease from cancer to um, to cataracts, they say. So spinach, and I love spinach. Of course, uh, take a look at this. Mm, spin, of course, spinach. <laughs> Yeah, don't touch that, that little clicker. Don't touch it. Okay, y'all, once all of this is mixed in, salt, pepper. Hey, a little salt, a little touch of pepper, a little Creole seasoning in here as well. Throw a little Creole seasoning down in here. And you can put um, some uh, Worcestershire sauce or hot sauce. Then it's going to go into a baking mold, y'all. And I have an interesting little baking mold here. Take a look at this. This baking mold is cast iron and it's been lined, as you can see, with little aluminum foil strips. This will make it real easy to pull the mold out. And then it's going to bake at uh, about 350 degrees. Just keep those little aluminum foil pieces out of the way and just stack it in. I've sprayed this mold too, by the way, with uh, a nice vegetable spray to keep it from sticking. And y'all, you bake it and let it sit for a couple of minutes so that it can pull out of the mold real easily. Don't think you're gonna just dump it right out of that hot oven. And take a look at what this mold looks like when it comes out of the oven here. It's, uh, and you wanna decorate it with boiled shrimp, put some nice flavors around it. It's gonna really be interesting. And as I say, serve it as a vegetable or as a, uh, as a nice uh, side dish. Now we went over to uh, Natchitoches and went to a restaurant by the name of The Landing and talked to a great friend of mine, Kent Gresham, who told us a little bit about what the B&B &B business meant to him in the Natchitoches area as a restaurant tour and businessman, and also showed us a great dish. So come to the landing with me. So Kent, are those those uh, good Creole tomatoes? No, oh, we can't get good Creole tomatoes up here. <coughs> you know that. Oh, you okay. can. All you gotta do is give me a call. We'll <laughs> truck them up here. <laughs> but they just look like really nice vine ripe, and that's just as good, right? Absolutely. Vine ripe tomatoes, sweet yellow onions. And you're just going to saute uh, these together. Now, what exactly is the dish uh, we're doing? The dish we're doing today is a grilled yellowfin tuna steak with a pico de gallo sauce on top. Normally, a pico is served cold, but we saute it and serve it over the different fish we serve here. Now, what else goes in it at this point once the uh, tomatoes are sauteed? Once the onions start to uh, wilt a little bit, we're going to add uh, some serrano peppers. That's a mild pepper, a Mexican pepper. Uh, some cilantro, some Louisiana crawfish tails, and then we're going to top it off with some fresh lemon juice. Now, you know, I remember walking up and down uh, Front Street here on the Keene River in Natchitoches, and this building was, I guess it was an old warehouse or a store or something, but it certainly wasn't this gorgeous restaurant. When we came here, this was a Morgan and Lindsay. It used to be an old department store. Matter of fact, when I was a kid, I used to come down here and get bubble gum and that type of thing when I was uh, just a youngster. Well, you've done a beautiful job at uh, restoring it and uh, uh, making it uh, your restaurant today. Who walks through the front doors? Where, where did the clientele come from? Actually, we're seeing a lot of out-of-town clientele. Of course, this is a local favorite, but we're getting folks from New York, New Orleans, Arkansas, a lot of our folks are coming over from Texas, though. And, and, and when, when, they, when they come in, what are they looking for? I mean, uh, uh, do, do they think they're going to find the foods in New Orleans here since Natchitoches is so far uh, uh, up in the northern part of the state? Are they looking for something that's more uh, Spanish uh, across the Texas line? What, what, do they, what do they think they're going to find? You know, I think a lot of folks, when they come to Louisiana, they have this preconceived notion of Louisiana cuisine. So whether you're in New Orleans or Shreveport or Natchitoches, I think they're looking for that flair, that certain taste. Now, uh, uh, why, why do they stop off in the interstate uh, here in this uh, neighborhood? There's a lot of great areas to go, Cajun country to the south, and of course uh, Dallas is only a couple of minutes away. Why come to Natchitoches? Well, you know, Still Magnolias, the movie was filmed here eight years ago. Of course, I think that is one thing that brings them here. We have lovely lakes, the historic district, Antebellum Homes. So I think curiosity gets them off the interstate from the name of the, the town, Natchitoches. Right. And then they drive around and 
here it is. Yeah, and what a beautiful town it is. Now, how's our pico coming here? Well, we're just about ready to add the cilantro and the serrano peppers, and that's going to add a little bit of a, a flavor to it. It's not going to be hot, though. This is not a hot, spicy dish. It just has that really nice bite of the uh, of peppers. You know, I was reading in one of the magazines, one of the uh, culinary magazines the other day, that uh, of all the tuna, the sushi, uh, sushi grades, all of those different kind of tunas, that yellowfin is still the best to go on the grill, to go into the saute pan, to bake, whatever you're gonna do with tuna, go uh, for yellowfin, is that what you're finding? Absolutely, we tried albacore and a couple other times, but yellowfin is the customer's number one favorite. Oh, that really smells uh, so, so great. So it's just a nice, fresh, uh, fresh topping uh, to a dish. All vegetables, of course, this is my favorite part. It's gonna add some Louisiana crawfish All tails. Right. Of course, we only use Louisiana crawfish tails. Boy, I tell you, what a good, now you have the good uh, Creole, or, or should I say Cajun influence that's into, correct. The, uh, into the dish. So once all that's uh, in, the spices coming from the, uh, from the pepper, the uh, onions are sauteing nicely, and uh, uh, any liquids going into it at this point? Well, what we're gonna do is give it just a couple more seconds here. Of course, you know, most of the crawfish tails come already cooked and deveined and then right about this time we're going to add some fresh lemon juice and that's going to uh -huh. reconstitute the sauce a little bit and i always like to add the lemon juice towards the end of the the dish gives it a real zing kind of flavor yeah a really nice tart finish to it now now when we think of bed and breakfast communities i think natchitoches really stands out as one of the premier bed and breakfast communities in louisiana you know i think you're right uh, about five years ago there was only about five or six bed and breakfast is here. Uh, today, I think we're top 27. Why the growth? Uh, what's inspiring it? Well, we've been, uh, Kippinger just uh, announced that Natchitoches was one of the top six retirement communities in the whole country. And uh, I think that has a lot to do with it. Now, what about the relationship between the restaurant tour, like yourself and the B&B &B owner? Is there a really good relationship between the two of you? Oh yeah, we work very close together. Uh, knowing who's coming into town, and of course we give incentives for them to come here in the restaurant. And not to break in, but I think our sauce is just about All right. ready. But it smells great. So what do you do with it at this point? Well, it's very simple. We've taken our, our yellowfin tuna, we've cooked it on the grill, and of course I always recommend to cook tuna medium rare to medium. Don't overcook it. Just a couple of minutes on either side. Once you've got your steak ready, all you have to do is take your sauce and ladle it over the top like that, making sure you get lots of liquid. And that is all there is to well, it. Look how great that is. Now, you, how, how would you serve it? Just a, a, a side vegetable or a little, uh, what goes with it? I always recommend uh, steamed vegetables, something like, of course, this is a very healthy dish because of the tuna and the crawfish and no oil used at all in the cooking process and then some hot French bread goes with that. Really, really nice, light, uh, light, fantastic dish. One other question for you. Uh, what does uh, the B&Bs mean to you as a, as a restaurateur or any businesses up and down uh, uh, Front Street here in Natchitoches? Well, you know, any small town relies on the people that come in from out of town. And I think the B&Bs really uh, draw the out-of-state and the out-of-town people to give the town exposure. And, of course, for a restaurant, that's the best thing you can have is out-of-town exposure. Well, let me tell you, and, uh, and not just because you and I are friends and we've known each other for a while and fellow restaurateurs, I can tell you I'm about two and a half hours south from your restaurant, and people constantly stop in at, uh, uh, at Lafitte's Landing and say, uh, are you related to that landing guy up in Natchitoches? What fantastic food. So congratulations. You're all doing a really good job. And thanks so much for uh, sharing this good recipe with us today. Thank you very yeah. much. It's thanks nice to have you here. And hey, and I'm going to take this one to the table and eat it. Look all how right. beautiful that thing is. And let me show you a couple of other great dishes that we found over at Fleur de Lis. First of all, my celery potato salad with lemon mayonnaise. That's right, lemon mayonnaise. You make just a nice uh, mayonnaise dressing, put lemon zest and juice in it, and you have to let the boiled potatoes marinate in that overnight, and mm, it picks up that great lemon flavor. And right next to that, y'all, a fabulous ice cream, Jack Daniels chocolate ice cream. I'm going to pour a little bit chocolate sauce on top of it. Uh, is this to die for y'all or what? Absolutely a beautiful dish. And you know what this is made with? A quart of heavy whipping cream. That's right. A quart of heavy whipping cream. A quart of milk. One dozen eggs. A dozen eggs. I, I said it was a dish to die for, right? But you'll die with a smile on your face. It's a fantastic dish, really nice. And another uh, one of the typical dishes that's found at Fleur de Lis, and of course, a great 
area of Louisiana for not only B&Bs, but good food. And as you heard Kent say, there's what, 27 bed and breakfasts in the Natchitoches area today. So if you're looking for one of the greatest places to get away, a place to see a different part of Louisiana rather than the Cajun, uh, the Cajun uh, part of Louisiana around the New Orleans area or the Swamplands, please take a side trip to Natchitoches, Louisiana. It's going to be a weekend to remember. And I want to thank all of you for taking the time to stop by as we continue to visit the bed and breakfasts of the Bayou State and cook up more of these fabulous tastes of Louisiana. We're going to see you next time. I'm going to check on Pastelaya. To learn more about A Taste of Louisiana with Chef John Folson Company, visit PBS online at the internet address on your screen. Hot beignets and warm boudoirs by Chef John Folson is available for $29.95. This companion book to the series features over 150 recipes. To order, call 1-800-973-7246 or write to the address on your screen. Major funding for A Taste of Louisiana with John Fultz and Company is made possible in part by Zatarain's authentic New Orleans style dinner mixes. Zatarain's, a good way to jazz up dinner and a real New Orleans original since 1889. Louisiana, she's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and leave different. Additional funding is provided by the Friends of Louisiana Public Broadcasting and the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting.